And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone, and some of us are awake while some of us are sleeping in our cars, but Georgie and I have been waiting to do this podcast, but Josh... He has been sleeping in his car. Didn't even watch the fights. No, oh, just decided to four mouse. Just decided to take a nap. I'm uh, going to bed. I'm gonna bust your balls one of these. Days, Mama man. had to come out, wake him up, man. Oh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I mean, uh, you, how you, you know, feeling there, sugar britches? Man, I was up early, you know, for my not too super early, but I was up early with my. You're son. normally up early. I am, but you know today. <clears throat> I didn't expect well, he's his first time playing football. So today they do this uh seven V seven thing. So it's a lot of just uh it's basically like receivers. Passing. Everyone yeah, yeah, it's all passing. It's all passing. And so uh, it was the first time he'd ever played football. And in, in terms of like a team sport, like me throwing the ball to him, all yeah. that stuff is fine. But this is like a team thing. So first time he'd ever done that. I wasn't expecting a whole lot, but they ended up getting to the semifinals uh, of their tournament today. It was the first time they'd ever played as a team. So I wasn't expecting, but man, it was 103 degrees. Hot <laughs> and we again. were on turf. And I didn't start feeling it until about, I don't know, I'd say about four o'clock. I started feeling real hot. <laughs> I started feeling real, real tired. Came back home, did the cold plunge a little bit. Wasn't enough to keep me up through these boring ass UFC fights tonight. <laughs> it was so. John, I was texting you. I'm like, man, this is this is one of those cards. I was, I'm dying. I'm, I'm dying. dying. I was dying. <laughs> oh man, I was dying. And uh, it really just came down to like basically, I fell asleep the last two rounds of the uh, main event. I, I was struggling, which was actually a good fight. Yeah, it was a really good. fight. Did you really think? I thought no, I thought, it was a good fight. One, two, and three. I mean, look, they were. It was good. It was a good fight. I, and it really, it really, it really cranked up in the fourth and fifth round. And of course, it did after I fell. Of course, asleep. as you were, it just—they were waiting for uh, your eyes to close yeah. to say, "All right, now we're going to go." It, they, they were, they were I was like this. I was, I was like this. My eyes were, yeah. I was like that. <laughs> in round three, because 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 uh, Canadier got rocked in the third round, and I was like, "Oh, okay, okay." I was awake, and then they went to break, and then I wasn't awake anymore. <laughs> yeah. That stuff uh, happens. It happens. But hey, guys, we've got a lot of special things coming up. Guess what? Tuesday, Tuesday. is Wayne Inns 500 episode. So Ooh, hey, woo. before we go any further, look, we'll be doing a giveaway for our members. For our members on our YouTube member channel, make sure you guys are members. Sign up to be members. We have a $4.99 tier system and a $4.99 tier system and a $1.99 tier system. Make sure you are a member for all of you that are members, you that we will be giving a giveaway for you guys. All of you guys that are members, you'll have an opportunity to win a giveaway. We'll be doing a Nate Diaz, George Mazadal um, hoodie sweater. And then we'll also be doing a box of element uh, for that on Tuesday. Make sure you guys do not miss our show. I'm still going to try to talk John into potentially going live on that show. That might be a live, live. show. You can talk so, me into anything. That'll be a fun one, I think. Uh, but let's have some fun with it. But look, you cannot win the hoodie. You cannot win the T-shirt unless you are a member. So make sure you guys sign up to be a member on our YouTube channel. So we've got membership tier systems. We've got the four ninety nine and the hundred and the hundred, the dollar ninety nine. Uh, uh, one hundred ninety nine. No. Yeah, make sure you guys sign up, man. But hey, this is something we knew that we're trying. I want to thank you guys. I think we've already got about ten members. I think right now that we started on. So hey, guys, get on down. You cannot win unless you are a member. So make sure you guys join. To be a member of the Wayne in podcast on YouTube. I want to thank you guys so much for continuing to follow us. And, uh, you know, John, why don't you go ahead and start on the UFC? Tell me about the Lions that's four a, and five. Go ahead. Tell me. a good idea. Me, I think, let's talk about Kai Hall against Jared Cannon. Look, at, uh, you know, it's those moments when you think about it, Josh, that I didn't want to be right, hmm. but I knew I was going to be right. And it all comes down, and it's not that Jerry Cannonier did not fight a great fight. He fought his ass off. But again, didn't let his hands go that what that much in the first round. And the second round, he picked it up, and I thought he won the second round, and it got the third round. He got hurt. In the fourth round, he landed some really good shots. It could have been his round. I really thought that uh, Bahala took it, but it was a close round. And if the judges, I think one of the judges did go that way for him. 
but you take a look at the fifth round and and this is what happens you know he had to do well in that round and he started going after Bahalo. Bahalo is just faster and was able to put shots on him hurt him bad i'll tell you what the way he went down it was he was lucky that uh Dan Regalata didn't stop it right away. He let it go, and Warhalla just poured it on, put him in um, a head and arm choke, then just a shoulder pressure choke, and almost had him where, you know, he was in trouble, but you know, he's sticking his thumb up like he's okay. But it just was the not a fitting end to the fight as far as if you're a Cannoneer fan based upon the fact of he was close. Now, on two of the, two of the judges' scorecards, 49-46. 45 mm-hmm. meaning that they gave a 10-8 round in that fifth round so and and they should have it was all the judges gave a 10-8 round because even the uh, one was a 48-46 so all of them gave a 10-8 round to Kai Borjalo in the fifth uh, so you know this is what happens in the fight game and I say it all the time I hate this part of it I hate the fact that they'll take a young fighter who is up and coming and showing that you know what they can uh they can be in that upper echelon and they look to say all right who are we going to put them against and they always pick the oldest guy it's just the way it is and normally generally usually the older older guy doesn't come out on top and that's yeah. what happened in this fight it's a changing of the guard i mean look it uh, is i think you've, is. you've been in the sport long enough like i was uh, you know, Tony Ferguson and Josh Thompson. I mean, that's kind of, I like to yeah. relate to that. Look, they no, knew is. what, they, they saw Tony was on the rise. They saw that, you know, that I was starting to slow down a little bit. It was a perfect opportunity for them to give me that fight. On top of the fact that I wasn't, I hadn't re-signed with them yet. And so they kept trying to get the contract done, kept trying to get the contract done. I was like, eh, you know. And uh, they're like, nah, let's, let me, we're going to prove to you that, you know what, we can do this. Yeah. And in this situation, I don't know what the Ken and your, uh situation is contract-wise, but age does play a huge factor in how they uh, do their matchmaking. And it has to. I'm not I'm not saying anything like, oh, they're doing something wrong. They're not. Mm-mm. It's just the game. It is the fight game and it's what happens and someday it's going to happen to, to uh, Borjalo. Mm-hmm. He's going to have the same thing and it's just the way it, it works. It's the same thing they do to Tony. Look at Patty Pimlet. Tony oh Ferguson, God. you know, it, it, it goes, it, it's, yeah, it keeps going. It keeps going. So look, yeah. if they can use somebody that had a name before in the past and try to build them up uh, for the, for years to come, and then that yep. person will eventually, the same thing will happen to them. Yep. So Bahala will end up having that probably done to him later on down the road, especially if he gets up into that title contention, he ends up being number one, number two, or fighting for a title or even become a champion. Yeah. They will try to find a way See, to get. This is why I love people like, Habib Nurmagomedov. He never gave him the chance, and I yeah. love that. I mean, I think you're going to run into the same situation with John Jones. You John's might. going to fight Stipe, and I think he's going to ride off into the sunset. Be like, hey, Tom, see you later, buddy. I'm not yeah. looking for, you know, like, hey, you enjoy. You know? Hey, it just lay the belt down. Here you go, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Have, I, have I, fun. And look, and he can do that. Yeah. And Habib can do that. He can do and that. Like, God's You know, you, that. you look, and a lot of people are going to be upset with him if it happens. And you look and you go, nah, you got nothing to be upset nah. about. He's at being the, smart. At the end of the day, there's always going to be one more guy that everyone yeah. wants to see you fight. There's that Absolutely. one more person. Yeah, it's just one more. Yeah, the only other guy I really, really would have wanted to see Habib fight would have been GSP. That's it. I wouldn't want to see him fight. Yeah, but that, see, but that one was, that wasn't possible. Yeah. GSP had already retired. No, he had already retired. It was possible. And to sit there and say, oh, you know all the was, all the things that happened. GSP yeah. didn't want the smoke. We get it. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, John's like, oh, bro, don't let me, don't let me get started. No, no, it was it was possible. It just it came down to the point where GSP didn't want to make the fifty five. I think he was kind of getting his weight down. You remember how small he looked for a while? Yeah. And then I he think did. he realized, like, nah, I just won't be able to perform at that. So come up to 70, and I don't think they were at the right time, right place kind of situation. I well, think- it's, it's tough to do the – it's it's very easy to do the fight if it's at 155 because you've got a champion mm-hmm. fighting in his weight class, defending his mm-hmm. belt. And if as soon as you say it's at 170, well, GSP's not the champion now, and Habib's not the champion, so it kind of takes that that whole thing away. So mm-hmm. it's it's tough 
putting it up at the 170 compared to having it at 155. But I'm glad the fight never took place. Would that fight have beat the Connor and uh, Habib pay per view 2.9? No. Nope. I don't think it would have either because the, there was no animosity. There was no, like, exactly there was no it. grudge. There was no grudge. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, people, people put out money in those situations when they really want to see somebody lose or they yeah. really want to see somebody win and beat somebody. You know, it's both ways. Mm-hmm. That's when they go, I'm, I got to see him lose. I got to see it. And, you know, sometimes it works for him. Sometimes it doesn't. It's just the way it is. How much do you think people would pay to see me beat you up, John? I mean, you, you and I'd probably do you and, and Keto George there. Dude, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to be nice right now. I'm not going to say anything. Go on, John. But Go on, John. How, how much are you going to pay me to let you? Oh, John, come on, come on. I would just run around you until you got tired. You, you can run around all you want. I'll just let, I'll just let you keep on running, man. Uh, you, you have to send young Keto George, Mr. 25-year-old over there to try to catch me. You see, dude, <laughs> see you, 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 you look at Keto, man. He, he's fast. Speed. Fast, greased lightning. But, you know, yeah. it, okay, and this, and this is the funny part. You know, you and I have fucked around and oh, done yeah. stuff and everything. But it's one of those, your mind will never change. No. But man, your body changes. Oh, it does. And your ability to do things and how fast, excuse me, how slow you how are. How slow it is. Yeah. You know, and stuff. It's just like, yeah, it's just it's part of getting old. It sucks. It's horrible, John. Horrible. It's disgusting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, I saw the first, I said, I, I saw the first three rounds and uh, I apologize for falling asleep, but. It was one of those days. It was a long, hot day in the sun. <laughs> and I'm laying so on the couch. I always know, too, like, do not lay down when I'm watching fights. Do not lay down. Yeah. I was out, man. <laughs> I'm an early riser and all this stuff, man. But, man, it was it got me. It got me good. Cut me deep, Shrek. Uh, yeah. Look, the first the first few rounds I thought were pretty good. Uh, I had Bahala win in the first. I had Kenny win in the second. had Bahala win in the third, obviously. Yeah. And then I started snoozing. Uh, but after that, I mean, like you, you gave me a good breakdown on rounds four and five, but and it'll go the distance. But you know what fight I did see? I see the Richie fight and the Hill fight. Good fight, man. It Just was back and forth. What a little I, scrap. I mean, fast paced. Mm-hmm. They were going and Tabitha Richie was the, the one yeah. that was she was pushing that pace. She was the one that was saying, oh, we're going to fight at this RPM and we're going to maintain it. She was in shape because I thought, eh. You're going to end up, you know, pushing a little too hard and falling off. Nope. She was good for the three rounds. Angela Hill, who's always, you know, in good shape. She was getting tired. Yeah. You could see it. She's she getting older, pushing. though, too, John. Yeah. And she's pu- she was pushing her punches. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could tell how heavy her arms were at a certain point. And then she was, she couldn't even throw it, throw the punch out. It was just a push. You know, and that's what happens when you have all that you know, back and forth and the grappling and everything and everything's fast paced and you can't grab that moment to breathe. It's what happened. But I got to really say that Tabitha Ricci, man, she has improved her stand up leaps and bounds. She's, she's working in Ventura with Haas. He's the guy that's got the Mohawk there. He's He's a great boxing coach and maybe her boyfriend also, but I'll tell you what, she has absolutely improved in the stand up, and that's going to, that puts her in a position to be, Someone to deal with because she's always had a ground game. Yeah. But now her stand-up, it's effective, and she, and she is throwing good combinations. She's not shying away from stepping in the pocket. She really looked good. George over there with his head tilted like my puppy. He's a like a, <laughs> when, you get a new, when you get a new puppy. <laughs> that George. Uh, I, look, I thought uh, Richie looked good, man. The aggressiveness. I wasn't sure if she could maintain that pace for the full three rounds. Oh. Angela Hill, I knew she could maintain that pace, but even her, after like round, almost into the end of round two, you could yeah. tell she was, like you said, laboring. She was pushing yeah. the punches. The punches were getting pushed out. Even when she would stick and move on the punches, the yeah. hands would drop as they would come back out. Yeah. As they come back to her face, yeah. they were coming back to her waist. She was getting hit with some combinations. So big circles. Um, but man, man, that was a good fight. They were grinding on each other. They had some good clinch work. They had a little bit of a takedown, some grappling, mainly on the feet, most of it. But I just felt like Richie landed the harder, cleaner shots, straighter punches down the pipe. I was surprised because I thought Angela would get there a little bit faster with the reach. But Richie was actually able to land the harder, cleaner shots in some of those exchanges. She also threw like three, like 
threes and fours, whereas yep. um, Angelo was throwing ones and twos. You got to commit to throwing the third. You got to commit to throwing that fourth. That's the, the one that's going to That's the one that's, that's going to land. That's the one's going to land. That's the one that's normally going to do the most damage if you're able to connect. You got to get it through your head. I have to throw it. Even if I feel like I'm behind on the count, sometimes you just have to throw it. Like you look when you're a fighter and you're in there and you're throwing as soon as I throw and you see that person throw and you guys are getting ready. I, like you sometimes will second guess we're I'm a little bit behind the clock. Like if I throw this, he's ahead of me a little bit or he didn't fully extend. So now he's loaded up on the left hook. Yep. So I'm afraid to throw it. So I just cover when I see it coming out of the corner of my eye. Well, you sometimes still have to throw it almost like that Carlos Khan at Dan Hardy fight. Yeah. where Dan was like, ah, screw it, let me throw it, and beep, cost him the fight. But had Carlos not just committed to throwing that combination, you know, I mean, he, it, it would have been probably him that got knocked out because he got hit clean in that shot, right. too, in that exchange. And so, um, but you've got you've to commit to throwing that three punch, and sometimes the fourth, if you know the three lands a little bit. So in this situation, Angela Hill wasn't throwing the three and the four. Tabitha Ritchie was throwing the three and the four, and that's the ones that were doing the damage. That's what the one that left the lasting impression on the judge's eyes. You know, as it should have. And boom, she won the fight. But yeah. overall, man, it was a pretty good scrap. It was pretty a really good scrap. good scrap. You had the uh, tournament uh, championship for the tough in the middleweight division. Robert Valentin taking on Ryan Loader. <laughs> it was actually a, a, a good back and forth. Valentin really went after him. Uh, when Loader made a mistake, he got the back. He then lost it, you know. Loader was able to grab the arm, spin himself inside of the figure four, get himself out of the round, and then in the second round just took over and, and got into the crucifix position, and Robert Valentin could not get himself out. He took a lot of damage. He took a lot of hard elbows. Those He's going to have some lumps and bumps uh, for the next couple of days. Yeah, but you know who looked good, though, was Santos. Santos looked oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's going to be a problem. I'll tell you what. He is slick. Mm -hmm. He, it's funny. I saw him on an extreme couture, mm -hmm. and they said, "Oh, he's you know, he's you know from the tough. He's going to the finals." And uh, I said, hmm, and watched you know watched him work out a little bit. And he was nice and relaxed. Didn't throw hard, you know. Just flowed when doing little stuff. And I went, "All right, man." Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. He was relaxed. He was confident. He pieced mm -hmm. awfully up in that. I mean, just <laughs> it was a buzzsaw. <laughs> I was like, because he always, even when I met, it's like hey, he's kind of you know mild, you know mild manner, kind of you know kind of shy. Love those, love those yeah. I was never and, that and guy, he, but I love. And those he, guys. No, and and he was kind of like that, you know. And when you were watching the thing, and man, yeah. all of a sudden the fight started, I went, "Well, oh, this kid can throw." Oh. Oh man! So it was not like just oh anything that I was watching is he could really throw mm. against someone. He th dude, he countered just beautifully and just accurate. It was it was really impressive. He's gonna be good. I thought he killed Oafley. He dropped to his knees and he. Boy, I'll like, tell you what. Two, two, I was like, ref, you better get in there quicker than that. Oh son. my god! Hey, I'll tell you, and that right there, I am telling you this. You, I tell people all the time that are officials. Hey, when you can't move anymore to get where you're supposed to be to save that guy from that shot, maybe you ought to start thinking about it might be, you know, no matter who you are, you know, if you're slowing down and you can't get there when you really were not out of position, it starts to become a problem. Yeah, John, he looked like when he dropped to his knees, he looked like someone oh. in, this, in a samurai dude, movie. Dude, he looked like he got shot. Executed. Yeah. yeah. He Looked dropped like to his shot. knees. I thought I was expecting the samurai like just to <laughs> step over him and just off of the head. And pretty much that's what happened. Santos took his head off of the next two shots. Bink, bink. Yep. I was like, oh, those were, un those were unnecessary. Yeah. And of course, Santos was like, those were super necessary. <laughs> <laughs> they were for him, man. Necessary. I can tell you his wife was not disappointed in him. Oh. She was a little happy there. And that's, she, she should be because, man, I'll tell you what. He looked good. He's going to be good. I, I loved his attitude, too. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. said the whole thing about Michael Bisping there, which was true. Mm -hmm. He goes, and that's what I'm going to do. He says, I'm going to be the featherweight champion. I was like, right. got to have goals. Yeah. 
Yeah. Lost me one. Hey, 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 there's a goal, though. There's That's a goal. Uh, Michael Morales versus wow. Neil Magny. Wow. Neil yeah. Magny, all, you know, all over him as far as, you know, in the first half of the round. That spinning elbow when he off of the fence, man, it caught Neil. You could see it hurt him. And then he just went after him and finished the fight right there. And again, this is what happens. Young fighter going against an older fighter. You know, obviously Neil Magny's had a hell of a career. He's got a ton of experience. Very difficult to match the speed, the strength, everything there is. Yes, you can sit there and say, oh, it's old man strength. It's different. Old man strength lasts for bursts, where young man strength lasts for periods of time. It's a difference. And this is a, a perfect example of that. Yeah, I'm going to give you guys um, like my, my inside information in terms of when I hit that 34, 35, 36. And then training with guys like Islam, Habib, you know, uh, other guys that were the, inside the gym that I knew that were younger. Umar being 19, being like, yeah. he's 145 pound. And I'm like thinking to myself, man, just trying to, just trying to, I felt like I was Rocky chasing after the chicken. He's 135 pounder now. Yeah, I know. But like, <laughs> he was probably about, he's, but you know, he was fighting yeah. at 45, I think at the time. But yeah, 35, he's just, it was like me chasing after the chicken, trying to get a hold of him, trying yeah. to catch him. And him just hitting me with shots like a chicken just plucking at me pink pink and then running away uh with habib and islam is obviously exactly different. like you say you'll beat me yeah that's exactly Same how it have to be you though because yeah. if you fell on top of me i'd be dead be like, i already have me dead <laughs> yes you have yeah, and you almost <laughs> killed me by the way okay um but morales though is one of those guys where you can just see that inside the gym he's got all the potential and for older fighters like neil magny it's not like you said, we have the old man strength. Yeah, we have the old man strength. Then it comes in bursts, like you said. Uh, but the fatigue goes. It happens like if I throw That's hard that. and I throw fast and I throw and I throw a lot, well, I can't do that very often at 36, 37, 38 years old. Like I used to when I was 28, 29, 30, yeah, 31. The output. Yeah. The male, the, for me, I feel like in this sport, look, and it varies from sport to sport. The male, um, uh, what is it called? The, the peak, the yeah. prime. Yeah, their peak is at 27. I think it's actually getting a little bit younger, sometimes at 26 to 27 age. You have guys like uh, Usman Nurmagomedov, right? And then Umar Nurmagomedov. That 26, 27, 28 is kind of that peak, I think, now. Yeah. Now, it may be different based on where you live and what your what your uh, lifestyle is like. And I feel sure like it's does. a little bit younger for the guys from Dagestan. I feel like a little bit older for the American, Brazilian, Japanese fighters. Maybe the Japanese may be a little bit Little, maybe back down a little bit younger as well. I don't know why, but I feel like those guys can come in and explode and exploit the sport at 25, 26, 27, 28. And like with Habib, gone at 30, 31 years old, he's gone. You know, yeah. Islam, people, I know we keep talking about him going to 70. I, I do expect him to go to 70. I just don't expect him to stick around much longer. You know, and then you're going to see Usman probably come over from PFL over to the UFC and try to take over the 55 pound division. Umar is going to be there. But guys like Michael Morales, those guys, they're going to make their step up on these guys like Neo Magni. And Neo Magni, there's not much any of these guys can do. If I pull up that 175, uh, 70 pound division, I mean, I know that the champ right now is a little bit older, but right now he's fighting the best he's ever fought. Yeah. You know, and, but then you get into the other guys, you know, and, you know, we have a we have a huge announcement. So, you know, we have uh this weekend we've got Kamar Usman on the show. And so you guys, you we've uh we'll have that drop on Tuesday for you, or sorry, Monday for you guys. And uh, that's a fantastic interview we did with him, man. Very upfront, very uh great conversation. Very honest, very, very open about very truthful. I I loved everything because mm -hmm. he, he basically tells everybody. Look, here's the difference. And this is, you know, this is what I try to tell you know, young fighters is, hey, man, enjoy this stuff now mm -hmm. because it's different later on. And it is. Yeah. You know, it's just different. Yeah, you get you get the money and it's that's all great, but it's different. Yeah, you get the money, you get the fame, you get the bitches, you get all the stuff. Right. But then the thing is, though, is him and I were texting after we got off uh, and he's like, man, he's like, I've just learned so much in terms of what is life after fighting. And I said, there was so much that I learned from ages 36, 37, 38. And my, my goals in life changed. Everything changed. Sure the expectation of like wanting to fight the best guy 
wasn't as much as it wanting to fight the guys that really excited me. And I think sure. that's kind of where he's at. Not only that, just understanding where you are at in life. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I don't need to chase the title for him. He didn't need to chase the title. I was like, I don't need to chase the UFC title well, anymore. Like, you, I've been there. You got to be honest. Be you, know, you take a look at someone like Kamaro and you go, what is winning? What is winning the title going to do for you? Mm -hmm. You've been there. You know, yeah, it it may add to your legacy a little bit and say that it's, oh, you're a two time, you know, welterweight champion and stuff. But it's, a, it's not quite the same as being that person that won in two different weight categories. And so you look and you go, man, you, you have everything that, you know, you want. I'm not saying that you should retire, but you've got to have, and we talked about having, you know, that being able to put that mark on someone and say, that person interests me. That's the mm -hmm. person that gets me excited. That's the person that, you know, wakes me up in the middle of the night and I get a little bit of, man, what am I doing? Is this someone that I can beat? And you, know I mean? and you have all those thoughts in your head but it's the person that gets you excited. And when you're, when you continuously have to fight, especially as the champion, people that don't excite you or, you know, Hey, the promotion wants this, or, you know, they've, they've got the ranking, even though I don't really care. It doesn't mean, I don't think it's that, you know, great a fight for me. You got to do it. And so it's nice when you can get to that point where hopefully like you wanted to fight Cowboy Cerrone, yeah. you know, would have been a great fight would have been fun to watch but never came to you it would have been nice if that fight did just like it'd be nice if kamaro got to fight the person that made him excited as far as the fight game having him after after talking to him a while though is i felt like i feel like the hamzat fight would probably be the one that would make the most sense because it's a new challenge it's a new weight sure. class new challenge knowing that you had success especially now on five days notice or but whatever but especially it was. now because yeah. what was holding this is no different than where islam is right now where what was the what was holding kamaro back from going to 185 before it was izzy yeah he said he didn't want to fight izzy i am you know izzy's my friend i don't want to fight you know and okay, I totally understand it, but Izzy's basically out now as far as mm -hmm. you're, you're never going to have to fight him. He's not going to be the champ if, if that's what you're going to go for. So you look and you go fighting, you know, Kamzat again with a full camp and five rounds. Maybe it'll be a different fight. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens with Robert Whitaker first, but I think that'd be a, a great rematch for Kamaru Usman. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. I agree, I agree. But look, we I took us way off track, John. Yes. Michael Morales versus Neil Magny. I thought Morales looked fantastic. I thought he mm -hmm. he did what you were... If I'm a promoter and I'm, a, and I'm the UFC, I'm thinking to myself, you did exactly what I wanted you to do. I wanted you to go out there. I wanted you to finish Neil Magny. I wanted to show every, the world that you deserve to be in the main event spot. He got a little bit of a slow start. You know, I mean, I know that he dom I felt like he dominated the first round. Second round, he lost. Third round. Wait, wait, no. What are you talking sorry. about? Sorry. It was one round. I was thinking, sorry, I was thinking of the... Uh, you the, sleeping in that uh, one, too. No, no. <laughs> I was thinking of the main event. Sorry, but uh, no, he did exactly what he needed to do. Yeah, you go out there and get the job done. And that's went out the, there. The Neil Magny got his back. He was able to just relax, take his time. Finally, when it was time to explode, he exploded with that elbow. And from that point, he just put it on Neil until they stopped the fight. Uh, next fight. <laughs> Gerald Mershart against Edmund Shabazian. You take a look at you know a fight that, look, Shabazian was piecing Mershart up on the feet. And hurt him to the point he goes down to the ground. And you're looking and you're going, why are you going down to the ground with that guy? You know, it's one of those. <laughs> I'm just, thank God for someone like Umulatov who fights in the PFL. But he's going to fight Naaman Gracie. And he knocks Naaman Gracie down. He doesn't jump down on him. Hmm. He goes, stand back up. Okay, smart move. Well, what the hell, Edmund? This is why you're losing fights is that is a fight that you should have won. Everyone knows if you're going to be in trouble with Gerald Mershart, where's it going to happen? Yeah. On the ground. 
Look at what happened. You won every bit of that fight until you did it. Until you did it. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you guys want to see exactly how a fight would go with John and I, it would be me sticking and moving, jabbing, jabbing. I would be Shabazi. And as soon as we hit the ground, John would I'm fall on top smash and just you. squish me dead. <laughs> it would just grab my head and squeeze it like a pimple, and it would just come right off. <laughs> Uh, you know, but look, look, you can't, it's hard for a coach or it's hard for anyone to sit back and go, Hey, fight this way, fight this way. The fighter's going to do what they want to do when they get inside sure. the cage. Sure. In this scenario, in this situation, it just came down to fighter IQ, understanding where you win the fight and staying, keeping it there. Yeah. That's it. You know, That's and, it. and, and I'm, but, you I, know, God bless Gerald Mershart. He pulls it off again. He yeah. is he is remarkable and and you got to give it up. I think that puts him in. He's the number one person as far as finishes in the middleweight division in the yeah. UFC ever. And and you know look at it, if being honest, no one's going to come up with that as the answer when you know someone asks him you know a year down the road, who's got more finishes than anybody in the middleweight division? You're not going to think Gerald Mercer. You're going to think Anderson Silva, any you know, Izzy Adesanya, somebody like that. Nope, Gerald Mearshart, way to go. Ask and me, ask me in one year. And what's that? <laughs> ask me in one year. Yeah. <laughs> but and can lie his ass off <laughs> to the media, <laughs> which I thought was just absolutely phenomenal. The way he did it, yep. covering for Brendan Allen saying, Oh, Brendan was with me. I don't you know, obviously you guys you're looking at the wrong person because Brendan, I can tell you right now, this is me. So the, the, there's no story there. Way to go, Gerald. <laughs> I thought it was the best. I'm not going to get involved. <clears throat> <laughs> Just because you were there doesn't mean you saw yeah. what you think you saw. I think inside the casino because of the air Ask conditioning. Gerald Mearshart. Yeah, my, my glasses were a little foggy because yeah, the, there you go. See, the air con conditioning. Condensation. Yeah. yeah. Something happened. I, it, my vision was blurred. <laughs> yeah, my vision was blown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, John, any other fights on here you want to talk about? Yeah, I got to say something about the Zach Reese versus mm -hmm. uh, Jose Medina fight. Look, Zach Reese, you know, absolutely put a whooping on Medina, but you got to give Jose Medina is a tough some bitch who does not quit. You know, he went out there and he was getting worked, and he kept fighting, kept going, and so I, I just anybody that has that kind of heart, God bless you. You're tough son bitch. I want to give a shout out to Kong Wang too, or Wang Kong. I don't know how you say it. But that oh, knockout, she, I didn't know she beat Shevchenko. Oh, and kickboxing. Valentina kickboxing. Shevchenko, yep. Yeah. Now she's. Yep. She got some power. Oh, yeah. yeah she got she some power. Hit. Yeah. Six got a little crack. I like Not to see bad. her and Keto get after it. Dude, you, you figure what? That was like a one minute into the round. You know, she got power. at 125 pounds. Hello. That's impressive. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. Before we move on, though, I want to remind you guys, look, join to be a member of, of our YouTube channel. We're doing giveaways for our 500th episode on Tuesday. I'm not sure if we're going to do it live yet, but I believe we might. We're going to try to get this all sorted out between now and Tuesday. But that's our 500th episode. I want to thank you guys that have been supporting us. Since before, man, when it was Sammy and the Punk, now it's weighing in. I mean, Sammy, it's what? It's been so long, Sammy. John. It's been so long, so I'll long. Give a hammy, this. Sammy. Hammy, Sammy. <laughs> Sammy moved out of. He moved out of California. Lives in no Chicago. No shit. Now. He moved to Chicago. Really? Still doing? Still doing radio? Ah, uh, yeah, he's still doing radio. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So the young man, he married up. So he's, uh, you know, he's, he's basically being kept. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's, he's a good dude though smart man he's kind of like keto george keto george keto george is smart too i love this guy <laughs> he, he shaved the muslim beard i also want to thank our sponsors yeah. element and bet us element today i actually drank quite a few of them <clears throat> the kids got after a couple of them too because it was hot today it was hot out there on that turf play on the turf field but that 7v7 is a fun game for them Man, they're wearing those little foam helmets, you know, the little. Oh, did they have the, the, they had the to little wear the helmets? The yeah, yeah, it's a thing they okay. gotta wear. That's right. So that's good, but it was cool. But the kids were uh, popping off of the element, and uh, they loved it. I was actually surprised. Some of them were like, "Oh, one was a, oh, it's a little salty," but I make sure I always serve them cold so they like it. We did them in the cans. I did a couple of the uh, mixtures. But if you guys use our link down below in the descriptions. You guys, they will send you a bonus package, whether it's their newest uh, product that they're just releasing 
or one of their sample packs or whatever. But if you use our link down below, they'll send you a bonus packet with every purchase. Whether you're an Olympic athlete, professional hockey player, MMA world champion, or just an active kid, Element helps anyone stay hydrated. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Get your free sample pack with any Element drink mix purchase through link in bio. Also try the new Element Sparkling, a bold 16 ounce can with sparkling electrolyte water. Roll, train, ride, or play, but stay hydrated and stay salty. And BetUS, we want to thank them so much because guess what? We brought you guys all the odds we could on this last weekend's UFC. We got to get them to start keeping up with the PFL because, look, John and I picked a lot of winners that weekend. Damn so it's straight. one of those things, man. This was a good card, an entertaining card for the PFL. We actually said this PFL card looks a lot better than the UFC and actually delivered a lot more than the UFC did. So it was a good night of fights uh, on Friday for the PFL. And so if you guys get a chance, an opportunity to watch us on Tuesdays, we drop our bets uh, for bet us on Tuesdays, we go back over it. So check it out. Use our link down below with your first three deposits up to $2,000. They give you 125% bonus on your first three deposits on for 125% bonus. Use that link down below in our descriptions. All right, John, let's go ahead and jump right into the PFL. PFL was headlined by Brendan Lochnane, a man who is, uh, at 145 pounds. He hits like a truck. He kicks beautifully. And was the tournament winner, not last year, but the year before that. And now he's back in the tournament finals after getting a win against Kai Kamaka the third. It was actually a really good fight, back and forth. But Brendan just consistently got the heavier, harder shots. And, and the, the difference, I'm telling you, in, in my opinion, the difference in this fight was surprising to me because Kai Kamaka is a hell of a kicker. He can kick really well. He's got fast kicks. He's got powerful kicks. Brendan Lochnane outkicked him in this fight. The, the spinning back kick, man, beautifully done multiple times. Hurt him to the body with it. And the kicks to the legs, fast, hard, sharp. Brendan looked. He was on point. He looked really good because Kai Kamaka was fighting well. I can't. I cannot complain in any way. There's many times that I've talked about Kai and it's like, what was he doing? What was he thinking? That's not that's that's horrible fight IQ. No, nope. he was fighting his ass off and he was doing everything right that he could do. He was just getting hit by a guy that hit harder at the you know at this point in time, just hit him harder and and just basically kind of wore him down. I didn't agree with the split decision, but mm. you know, it is what it is. One judge saw it that way, but uh, you gotta give it up. Brendan Lochnane looked really good. Yeah, I thought it was. I think I didn't. Think, I didn't agree with the split decision either. But I did think it was one-one going into the third. I think you and I were texting back and forth over it. And for me, Kai Kamaka, he started off with the leg kicks heavy and fast, and then Brent, after about two or three, Brendan started kicking back. Yeah. But what I didn't like was as soon as Brendan started kicking back, and I've said this before, if you want someone to stop doing something, start doing it back to them. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Then Kai stopped kicking. And that automatically tells Brendan, oh, it hurts you. Yes. Let me go ahead and keep going. And because because then Kai quit kicking. So as soon as he quit kicking, now Brendan's kicking him. And now you see uh, Kamaka start changing his stance. And having a hell of an And he can't him. fight left-handed. No. And you could tell he was very uncomfortable in left-handed stance. And every time he switched back, Brendan would kick him again. Boom. And so he was having success in the first probably two and a half, three minutes of the round, Kai was, with moving his leg out of the way. Until he took a, t a couple too many, and then he started stop. Then he stopped kicking, and then he started switching stance, and then that gave Brandon Lockman the chance to go ahead and get after it even more. And that's exactly what happened. He just saw that he was having more effect, and then he landed the hard, clean shot. Then was able to just put him against the fence and labored some knees to the face, some harder shots against the cage. I mean, he looked good finishing up that first round, and then going into the second round. I had Kai kind of landing. So he went back to kind of throwing a couple kicks. 
I had uh, Kai win in the second round slightly, winning the second round. But uh, it was in the boxing because he was just landing. I felt like he had landed some good stuff when he threw and committed to ra- to the number to the three and the four punch. He was able to land. I thought, but I, I agree with you. In the third round, Brennan Lockney looked fantastic. He looked great. He took over the fight from there, and yep. Kai looked exhausted. You could tell that he gave everything he had. He in the took second. a lot of hard shots. He did, especially at the end of the first. He took a lot of damage in that first at the end of the right. first round. But John, overall, I agree with you a hundred percent on the fact that he. I'm sometimes yelling at the damn TV. What are you doing? Yeah. Throw your yeah. punch. Do this. Absolutely. Do that. He fought his ass off. Fought his ass off. He fought so yeah. good. He just. You could just tell, like those little tells to your opponent can change the way that he fights you. You cannot ever show that. Like when you stop kicking after you've done some damage to his leg, you had, he had he had Brandon Lockney switching stances yeah, after, after early. the second or third kick. Yeah. He started switching. And that we're talking been, a, minute, a minute into the fight. Yep. And that should have been his go to of like, okay, hey, let me throw a jab or a one two and then go back to the kick. Boom. Yeah. Let me throw a one two kick. Like in those moments, you've got to go for broke and just kick in the legs because you got to know that Brennan's probably not going to fall you to the ground. He's like, nah, let's get back up. So if I trip off balance and he kicks my leg or whatever it is, you got to look to scramble as hard as fast as you can, get back to your feet. But I just felt like in those scenarios, you got to just come out and go for broke. I always go back to the Douglas Lima and um, Roy McDonald fight. Yeah, like the first just, one. Yeah, the first one because Douglas just finally just was like, you know what, I got to get after the leg. I just kick it and kick it and kick it. And if I get taken down, I just got to fight to get back up to my feet. Just keep kicking it. And that's exactly what he did. I mean, he ultimately lost the fight because in the fifth round, he came out and kind of rushed across the cage, got taken down early in the round. There was the rest of the fight. But uh, in this situation, I thought Kai – just he got away from it too long in the second round when he could have done more damage. Whereas Brendan Lockney stayed on the leg kick, and that's what that's what the outcome of the fight was. Is he just had no fight after that because he had to keep switching to a southpaw stance, and he could tell he was not comfortable. In that not comfortable, stance. exactly. I agree. Uh, we had Magomed Umalotov, who is still undefeated, taking on Naaman Gracie, but it was a really good fight. Damn good fight. And you, and this is where I look and I go, but. At least Magomed Umalatov showed, hey, I'm a smart fighter. He did not follow Naaman Gracie to the ground. He did eventually in the third, you know, round. But early on, when you know he came out, he was. It was funny because Randy Couture was talking about Naaman Gracie being dry, and he goes, "He's so dry, it's crazy." And it's like, no, he's the grappler. He's the guy. I want to be dry as far as I don't want a whole lot of sweat. And Umlatov came out the way that he should have. He was sweat. His hair was its the way it's supposed to be. That's called gamesmanship on both parts, and I, I thought it was smart. But Umlatov overall really looked, you know, he looked in control for a lot of the fight, but he got hit with some shots. Yeah. He really showed that, hey, there, there's some openings there for someone to attack him. And I honestly think he's gonna, he's up against it. Oh, yeah, he that, is. That's 17-0 and 0 yep. is possibly gonna go in the finals because that's a hell of a welterweight matchup yep. in the pfl finals between him and musayev yeah john umlatov took some big shots in the third round yeah. by gracie great and look i think gracie's he's good in the stand-up but he's not great in the stand-up no he's better with elbows he's than he is boxing and yes. he is game out of all the gracies and i said this years ago uh when he when we were with bellator i said he is probably the one that has the best stand-up out of all the Gracies that I've ever seen come come through. Give me another Gracie that had a better stand-up than him. I don't think there is one. I don't think there is either. I'm being honest. A and, better stand-up than him? He and, actually, especially with his elbows. Mm-hmm. But and not only just having use those. Not only having better stand-up than all the other Gracies, but the willingness to throw. Yeah. Like and all the other Gracies, they they had some decent, you know, some couple of them had some decent stand-up, but then they didn't like getting hit. This yeah. guy, Naaman oh, Gracie, he'll, he doesn't he it. doesn't mind. He'll take it. Oh, yeah. You know, he'll try to deliver. I mean, like his success that he had, a lot of it was on the feet. And then yeah. people are like, oh, he's just going to be a, a grappler. No, no, no. He had good wrestling, good body lock takedowns. He took down Ed Ruth several took, times. Yeah. I mean, he's he's got some wrestling. He's got some good body lock takedowns. He's also good on the feet. He's not afraid of being hit. I mean, he's still growing as a young man. I don't know how old he is, but I feel like I know we've been covering him for a while. But I feel well, he, like there's still room for him to improve. He's there, he's getting up there now. He's 35 yeah. years of age. Got it. I know Got that. It. But I mean, but, John, it's a, 
But you look and you know, and I tried to, I was talking with Ian Parker and saying, you know, hey, what does Ian know about fights? Come on, man. (laughs) I said, if I could, if if I was going to, you know, all the prop bets and everything, I said, I would take Naaman Gracie to make it, you know, to a decision. Mm. I'm not saying he's going to win the decision, but he'll make it, you know, all the way through. It's going to go to a judge's decision. And he goes, really against Umalatov? And I go, man, I've only seen one guy stop him. That was Yamauchi. You know, put him put him out, and then he fought Yamauchi again, and Yamauchi went to a decision. Yeah. It's the only guy that's ever stopped him. Yeah, and it, he will he will throw on his feet. And even in that third round with Umlatov, uh, there was a sequence there where Naaman came underneath and got to the leg lock, could have got to the calf slicer, just couldn't sit up oh, fast it was, enough. It was it was so close to yeah. setting. He had it. I he know, just couldn't like, get up fast yeah. enough, and he wasn't able to control the leg as as well as he would have liked to. But there was an opportunity there. Oh yeah, it was that opportunity? And so, Umlatov was diving, yeah, diving for that cage like, to get away, out of that thing. Give yeah. me away. But uh, I thought that fight, honestly, to, to was a lot better than I was giving it credit for. Yeah, I was expecting Umlatov to kind of like just control Gracie, dominate. And I, I mean, I actually had Gracie pretty much win in the third round. So that says a lot about me. You did, yeah, in that third round. Yeah. Next fight. Ah, we had Timur Hisriv going up against Gabriel Braga. This was a this was a very well. Uh, contested fight very close i thought that braga really impressed me with his ability to stop the takedowns overall um he did not throw his hands enough he did not show enough offense in the fight and i think that was one of the big reasons he had it, it went to a split decision i don't agree with the split oh, decision yeah. but uh his riv is he's the real deal the kid can fight he can wrestle he can stand up and, and fight. He's got good movement. Um, he's going to be a problem for anybody. And Brendan Lochnane is going to have his hands full. I'm not saying that Brendan can't beat him. He definitely can. He can put that first mark on his record. But at this point, nobody has done it because the kid's 17 and 0. Yeah, Brendan Lochnane doesn't have as good a takedown defense as Gabriel Braga. I don't think so. I don't think so either. And the way that uh, his rev, when he did finally lower his level and shoot, he got the takedown pretty easily. And then he just wasn't able to control Braga on the ground. I mean, but he didn't really care to either. He's like, on the feet, no. I can do what I want. He was doing fine on the feet. That is kind of when you see, and I don't want to keep going back to the Dagestan fighters, but when any fighter, when it was George St. Pierre, when it was guys that were just really good in all places, they didn't really care. They wanted to get the takedown to show they could. Let the judges know I could get a takedown. And then they go back up to the feet. If they couldn't hold you down, they didn't care. They'd back away and make space. Go ahead and get back to the striking. If the takedown comes easy again, then I'll get it again and then let you guys know or remind the judges I can do it here too if I want to. I thought Braga, I agree with you 100%, looked fantastic in stopping a lot of the takedown attempts. Uh, but on top of that, when you know somebody can that has a fast shot, can lower the level and penetrate the way that – his rev does and get the takedown. And if you get stuck on bottom, it is going to be a lot of work to get back up. And I could take some damage. That's why he wasn't throwing his punches. Yeah. He didn't want to overextend. He didn't want to yeah. leave himself out of position. Uh, but I thought Braga fought a hell of a fight. I got to I got to be honest. I thought he fought a damn good fight. So I would have liked to have seen Brennan Lockman and Braga fight. But I think his rev right now, I think from the beginning, you and I had said in this PFL tournament, it was going to come down to uh his rev and probably like either Lachnane or kamaka um but i i didn't expect braga to fight as well as he did just based on the fact he just lost his father he was yeah. having problems in riyadh when i was there that was back in february uh end of january or february i believe it was and it just i didn't expect him to, to make the turnaround so fast and so well he looked damn good in this tournament he looked he great did. so yeah. um tip my hat to him because look his rev is can do it everywhere so can Braga. He proved that. He proved that last night or Friday night. Yeah. Next fight, Shamil Musayev taking on Murad Ramazanov for the second fight in a row because he ended up uh, getting a nice knockout over the at that time I think only defeated, no at that time undefeated mm-hmm. Ramazanov, and you know the second go, obviously Ramazanov came in with a game plan of I'm going to take you down. And he was unable to do that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Shamil Musayev can wrestle his ass off. He is slick. He can, he, you talk about turning a corner fast when he wants to turn a corner. It's amazing. His balance is phenomenal. This guy is the real deal. 
he yeah. is a problem for people because he's got fast hands, fast kicks, spinning attacks, and can wrestle for days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you and I were texting during this fight, and you're like, man, Shamil's just good. He's just good everywhere. He can do yeah. everything. He can wrestle, and on the feet, he was throwing bad intentions. You know, it didn't look the prettiest sometimes, but he still, you just knew that he's like, I don't care if I get hit, I'm going to hit you back. And uh, he has some good combinations. And if I get in any type of trouble, I'm just going to take you down. Yep. I was like, oh, so, uh, but I don't want to say that it's boring because he did make it look so easy, but I, I just, know. I get to these points where John, like these guys that are so good at something like, you're like, they make it look easy. But then on my side as a, as a fight fan, I'm like, hey, it was kind of boring to watch because it was so one-sided. It was dominant. I mean, he, he yeah. dominated the first time they fought and then he dominated again. This time he fought True. and Ramazanov had a different game plan, but guess what? Didn't do anything. No. Didn't do anything. So, uh, next fight. Our next fight of the evening was Muhammad Berhamov taking on Ray Cooper the third. I think we I think we disagreed on this one in one of the rounds or something. Like no, that. but I was <laughs> right. I was right. Let's just no, go ahead and no, get No, I out. was right because Berhamov won. No, I didn't so. say that. Don't, no, don't try to stake claim on that. I said uh, that it was a 1-1 going into the third. I really, I really I looked at this fight going in, and I really thought that Ray Cooper had to, to get him in the first round. Uh, I thought that was going to be his chance. It's not that, you know, Ray's got power, and he's got mm-hmm. power any time during the fight. But he was taken – as the fight went on, he's just getting peppered and just getting worn down, and it, and it just had an effect. But I still love watching Ray Cooper the third fight. He is he's like watching Mike Tyson. Mm. You know, he's just got that power. You know that he can land it, and he did land it a couple of times where you looked and you said, "Ooh, mm-hmm. he's lucky he rolled with that because that thing was right there, and that that, that was close to you know put him out." But very smart fight. I thought by Berhamov. Berhamov yeah. just fought a very intelligent fight against a guy that has supreme power and just just used volume just to piece him up. Yeah, Berhamov couldn't. Uh, There's the reach. He was able to to touch him and yeah. then make uh, Cooper reach in for the, for the striking. <clears throat> couldn't yeah. get in. He he was landing some good shots in some exchanges, but he couldn't land the two and the three. He would land the one or he'd miss the one and then land the two. Then he couldn't land the three. He never was able to follow up with a good hard shot after he landed one. And that had to do with the reach. <clears throat> that had to yeah. do with the ability of Berhamov, Berhamov to go ahead and slip in and out, you know, and get just slightly out of range. The Cooper's going to always have that problem. He's like, what, 5'6", 185 pounds. I know he fights at 170. But all of those things being said, John, I thought he looked fantastic. I mean, but it re- he, he what really hurt shit. him, what really hurt him was facing a guy that was a southpaw. Mm. Being that length that he is comparatively yep. to, he couldn't get his right hand anywhere near him. He yeah. he actually hit every time that he hit Brahamov with a good shot. It was a left hook, mm-hmm. but he couldn't get that right hand to uh, to actually connect, and that was a big problem for him in the fight. Yeah, I expect when you go southpaw versus conventional, I for me a lot of that combination after working with Robert the Ghost Guerrero, who's a southpaw, and he's him and I had talked countless times. So I was getting ready to fight uh, Nate Diaz. He's like, "Look, lead with your right hand, but lead it to the body, and then come back over the top with the with the left hook, and then finish up to the head with the right, a straight right." He's like, and then when you do it, circle out to the backside, and then just push the elbow, and then follow behind them until they turn back into you. What I saw from from uh, Cooper was he was really just lunging in, trying to cover the distance that way. Didn't really strike to the body a whole lot. Had one or two occasions he did, but you got to hit that body to lower their level, uh, lower their elbows down. It was very much like how you got how I had to fight Nate. Is that he was taller, so I couldn't reach him because he was longer and taller. I would have had to lunge in a lot more, and that would have made it easier for him to to tag me. So if I go to the body, then he has to crouch down kind of to put it, bring his elbows down. And that makes his head more, makes it easier for me to hit, hit him to the head. It makes it more accessible. Then you come with the left hook, you know, over the top of his shoulder, over his guard. And you try to finish with a right or a head kick for me in that situation. But in this situation, Cooper just didn't have, he didn't have that mentality of what to do. Well, he doesn't kind of crazy. 
And he, he he doesn't kick. No, I know. He probably threw two kicks the entire fight. You know, he he's boxing centric, and that's just the way it is. But where I was impressed with Cooper is that by the end of the second round, he was still doing really well in terms of his conditioning. I mean, he was pushing the pace, walking forward. And John, oh. he didn't concede any takedowns. No, 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 no. Well, well, in the in the third, he got he got tired. Yeah. But I'm simply saying, yeah. like in the first two rounds, that the, the, take, get... the takedown that he hit was beautifully oh, done. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. He used the backside of his knee, blocked it off the leg. Really well done. But it was a good fight. It yeah. was, it was a, it's one of those that you look and you go, those are two guys that really understand what they're doing. Matched up well. It was, a, I thought it was a, a really good fight. John, uh, I'm going to skip over the poker fight, but I, I thought the fight, the other fight that I really enjoyed was Barzola versus Tyler Diamond. That was, unless you want to talk about the poker fight. Do you want to talk? Poke, sorry about that. Poker didn't fight. Oh, I didn't. I was like, because I didn't see it, so I was gonna let you talk <laughs> did, about. Did it. not fight. <laughs> Barzola and Diamond. Um, great this fight, was, Josh. Josh, this fight reminded me. This is AKA, and Enrique Barzola is the ugly Josh Thompson of AKA. Okay? Yeah. Okay, because he comes out and he does the same thing that you did. Yeah. <laughs> he comes out. He's fight. He loses the first round, and every you know, time he, he got blasted in that first round. Uh, and Tyler Tyler Diamond was all over him. Out wrestling him, out out striking him, everything it was a beautiful exhibition. And in the second round, and it was like, and I said, I said in the thing that yeah. was Tyler Dunn, but Enrique Barzola is a guy that he comes on, so stand by, you know, it could change up. And boy, he did. He fought beautifully for the next two rounds against a, a bigger, stronger guy, and just showed what having heart and a big set of lungs will do for you, because he looked great. It was a, that was a good fight. You and I were texting. I said, he is fighting like every single one of my fights. Yeah. He loses the first round and basically exhausts his opponent's uh, ability to continue punching on my face. And then as they get tired of punching me in the face, I start to take over rounds two and three and then come away go. with the victory. All right. And that's exactly how he fights. And uh, hey. that's a, honestly, that's a, a lot of that AK mentality. I mean, like you had guys, you know, Kostik didn't fight that way, but Kostik had... He had great cardio, could wrestle the shit out of people, had power in his hands. John Fitch would just grind on you and grind on you and hang on you. Bobby Southward would just make you fight at his pace. I mean, we had so many guys that would just fight that way, and we'd use cardio as a weapon. And, uh, man, Barzola has really figured that out. He knows. I, I have always, and I, we talked about this on Tuesday, I think he is better at 35 because Tyler Diamond looked huge standing Compared next to him. To him. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you are so small for this weight. You're not a big 45 pounder. What are you doing no. here? But no. you're killing yourself to get to 35. I get it. I understand. But a uh, good win by Borzola. You got to figure he's older. He's, he is. You know, he's getting up yeah. there. And when you're a lighter weight guy, getting older, losing the weight has more and more effect on you. So John, I understand. He that. fucking looks older than you, dude. That, that's, <laughs> he's not that's as bad. old as you, but he fucking that's looks bad. old. He yeah. looks old. But uh, uh, but man, he can fight. The guy can yeah. fight with the Dickens in him, and he's just he's an animal. Yeah. He's an animal. So I like to give some love to my AK brother, though. Hey hey hey! Mm -hmm. Congratulations, mm -hmm. hard fought win, well deserved. Enjoyed watching that fight. But Tyler Diamond, man, he fought his ass off too. It was a great fight. He got some yeah. trouble in that third, se second round. He got hit with the uppercut. Oh yeah, to the stanky leg. Yeah yeah, and then the third round, Barzola started to take over and push him around and, and get him in trouble too. So. But, man, what a great fight. It was a fun fight to watch. It was. Any other fights on here, John, you wanted to wrap about? Look, I want to say Jose Perez, first fight in the PFL, looked fantastic. That kid can fight. But, man, Maxwell Dejantu Nana. Stand by, Josh. This dude can fight. This Tell guy's me. got fast hands. He is big, 265 pounds. He can wrestle. He will pick you up and drop you on your head. He is not afraid to exchange, and he has got power. Look out. This guy's going to be something. Does he have conditioning, though, John? At 265 he, pounds, does he have cardio? Absolutely. He did not get tired at all. I'll, I'll give it both he and Shido Boris Esperanska. Esperanska. <laughs> yes, you think that's a Esperanka. They both are part of the PFL MENA, uh -huh. meaning Middle East, North Africa, and... I'll tell you what, both of them came out and just put on performances. Kent um, Mafilio, he came in there to fight. He fought his ass off. He took some big shots. He gave some big shots. 
So he was, it's not like he was a walkover, but man, he was up against it with Maxwell. That guy's going to be fun to watch. I mean, if you were to put him, say, and I know he's relatively young in this whole thing, but like you've got Hena Fajeda, you've got Francis Ngannou, you've got like, I mean, where are you kind of, are you like, hey, in a year, I could see him potentially being ready? Year and a half? Well, look, he's from, you know, the whole Francis Ngannou thing, when you're looking at it, he's from Cameroon. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Francis is probably his hero. Uh, it's not like he's a younger guy. I believe he's 33. But uh, he's fighting. You know, It's funny because they said he was fighting out of France. But mm-hmm. I know his coach, who's English. Mm-hmm. And so um, I don't know where he's out of. You know, he's out of Manchester top team. So that's telling me he's out of England. Right? But he is uh, He's absolutely talented he beat dennis goltsoff in the sambo world championships to win the sambo world championship so the the guy is good he's got a big reach he's got you know close to an 80 inch reach and his hand you know his nickname is leonidas and i'm just telling you fast for a heavyweight and he's 265 pounds josh and he's got abs so i don't believe it (laughs) yeah Uh, uh, John, is there any, uh, well, let's, let's do one news thing on here. Is there a news thing let's that we go. talked about or let's do one news thing on here. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, you know what? Let's have a little fun with this. I thought this, oh no, not which one. one? There was one on there that I thought was hilarious that we sent, uh, about the news. Oh, this one here. This is the greatest one ever. <laughs> <I saw that. laughs> when did they get him to do that? Dana dreaming about John Jones, baby, being the greatest ever. The go. go. The go. Oh, I thought it was great. John was looking sexy as hell in his sexy. red. Dude, red panty night, baby. Red panty night. <laughs> it's I red it panty night. We made it. Well, hey, guys, that's going to wrap up our show. We talked about the PFL and the UFC, but hey, it's not too late to subscribe down below to our channel. Also, you guys got to subscribe, hit the bell and the notifications. You guys, we have some shows dropping. We have special guests coming on on Tuesday. We also are dropping the Kamara Usman on Monday. And we have our show, our 500th episode drop coming out on Tuesday. Make sure you guys don't miss it. We are doing a giveaway for that show. It will be a Nate Diaz uh, Tenori sweater, uh, obviously the newest brand, and that is awesome. And so we're, I'm going to drop that hoodie as well as one of the uh, Nate Diaz Masvidal shirts that I got at the uh, at the fight when they had the boxing match. That show will go as well. Or that shirt will go as well. We've been doing that giveaway plus a box of Element. Uh, so you have to be a member of our channel. You have to be a member, subscribe member to our channel. Uh, but we have memberships at $4.99 and $1.99. But you have to be a member to win one of these prizes. So make sure you guys become a member by Tuesday. Become a member by Tuesday. We're going to probably either go live with our show. We're not sure yet. But like I said, we have a guest on Tuesday as well. So we're going to have some fun with this, guys. Make sure you guys join our memberships at our YouTube channel. George, you got anything for us, buddy? No? No? George just wants to go to sleep. He's trying to reach for his mic. Spitting the mic, buddy. Spitting the mic. <laughs> I'm shutting, shutting my fan off. Nope. We're shutting good. Shutting the fan off. John, do you got anything else for us, buddy? No, nah, man. Everything is good. I'm I'm getting closer to being able to move into my house. All right. I'm ready to go. I got just some more work to do. Well, that's why you weren't asleep during the fights, because you don't have anywhere. You don't have a bed to sleep in yet. No. That's I don't sleep in a bed. I sleep standing up. Oh, geez. You know what? I know people that do that. They buy those like coffin looking things and they sleep standing up. I know people that do sleep standing up. They actually strap themselves in. I know some people that sleep during the MMA fights. You know what? I'm going to punch you through this camera right now. Good call, George. Do it. Do it. Do it. it, it. Come on. You think that train alta program did you You some good? Wait till you get in there with a real pro. John, get him. John, yeah. get him. <laughs> don't, don't, don't diss Rich Chow's organization. Oh, oh yeah. there it is. Your friend. I'll start he's beef. Like a, oh, you start family beef? beef. He's a, family he's a beef. beef. He's a beef. All right. All right. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, hopefully you guys enjoyed this show. Uh, I want to apologize. and missed the last two rounds of the main event, but I want to thank you guys so much for continuing to support us. And uh, at least I still answer the phone when I call. Like, remember, remember what podcast day we couldn't reach him that one time? He fell asleep. 
Oh, he was on the couch. He was he out. On the couch in his God. office. And we called him. You called God. him. I called oh, him. Man. I called his wife. She didn't wake up either. I was like, man, you guys are a, a, a house of heavy sleepers. <sighs> Jeez. I want to thank you guys so much. Hit that subscribe button down below. And John, take us away, buddy. For everyone out there, hope you enjoyed the fights. Congratulations to Mr. Cowboy Howard. That was a hell of an impressive fifth round against a really good fighter in Jaron Cannonier. For everyone out there, we will see you.